Hey everyone, it's Riker. I hope this video finds you healthy and safe today. Um, today I am going to be showing you my artsy creative space, um, aka the corner of my basement. Um, so first of all, and I know this is kind of a more popular video among artists on the interwebs to see uh, how we do it and behind the scenes type stuff. Uh, so let's get right to it. Uh, first of all, give you a big wide shot of my space. I won't show you the rest of the basement because you don't need to see that. Um, so let's start first with uh, what I use for a palette. So uh, I use Tupperware. Uh, it's plastic, it doesn't absorb the paint into it. Um, it's also sealable, so I can uh, put the cover on it. See, And I can usually keep mixed paints in this for up to a week before they really start drying out. Um, different compartments so you don't have paints run in together. Uh, this Walmart, like a dollar and a half or so, I've got uh, two of those. Because uh, I'm usually working on two paintings at a time, so I have two of them, one for one painting, one for the other one. Um, so my uh, washing bucket and my uh, other bucket for more clean water. Um, I've chosen to go with Liquitex paints. Um, I, I like their flow, I like their colors. Um, I originally started out with Liquitex Basics and up until about eh, six months ago I used the Basics and then I started going to the uh, you know the acrylic heavy bodies which I love. A little more expensive but they're worth it. Um, for my uh, brushes, I kind of grab whatever catches my eye. I don't have a specific kind I use. Um, I've got everything from, you know, um, different special effects brushes um, up to the nicer long handle big brushes. Uh, my giant, my giant ones for these bigger canvas stuff. Um, I've got my small detail brushes, which I use quite a bit big mop brushes and my blending brushes and yes a toothbrush don't knock it till you try it um, here's all the brushes I currently use it's a mess but you know I don't need to be organized while I'm working on stuff um, also my uh, awesome set of earbuds that are charging right now and I've also got my uh, smart device where I just you know voice command what I'm what I'm wanting to listen to and one other necessity if you're an artist that uses reference photos for painting is a little tablet or phone mount. I just recently got this after um, needing it for the last four or five years and it has changed my world, let me tell you. Um, <clears throat> a great easel, uh, my wife got it for me on Christmas. It'll hold up to a 50 inch high canvas, haven't had to use it yet but I'm getting there. Um, and then I just use these, uh, these plastic bins from Walmart, they're pretty cheap. Um, but, you know, I store my paints there, um, other miscellaneous stuff there. Um, as far as where I get all my gear, um, I try to stay local. Sometimes, you know, you gotta go where the price is best, but uh, I usually go to Spokane Art Supply for all my stuff. Um, also Michael's uh, for my canvases usually, but I'm thinking of switching over to Strictly Fredericks because I love their stuff, but, um, if you want a good paper towel, um, get the thicker ones. Uh, these I can usually use for quite a while. I think it's just the Kirkland brand on this one, but, um, if you, you know, if you want a good one, get a thick one that almost feels like a rag when you get it wet versus the El Cheapos. Um, yeah, that's personally what I prefer. Um, as far as lighting, um, I've got a lamp that kind of fills the ambient light in the room. And I've got one that's specific to where I'm aiming, or where I'm working on my canvas. I only use daylight bulbs for color accuracy, um, but that can be kind of a, can be kind of a hindrance sometimes. Because you're working under daylight and you think all your colors are bright enough, but when in reality, when you get into regular light, it can actually become really, really dark. So make sure that if you do work under daylight bulbs, you shut off the lights every once in a while. Check your colors. Um, make sure that they're still showing up really good. I've been doing really well in this painting, but some of my other ones, not so much. I'll show you those a little bit later down the road. But anyway, so yeah, that's my area. I just use a cheap flat sheet. 
um, from Walmart to, or wherever you want to get it from, um, to use as a drop cloth. Uh, it's acrylic, so it's going to come out. I just want to prevent it from getting on the carpet. So, yeah, that's not, that's about it. Um, yeah. Uh, so let's work, get into what I'm currently working on. So, so I'm currently going to be, uh, in the near future working on a storyline with author Mitch Klein, local author about dragons. And it kind of coincides with Pride of the Order and that storyline and that backstory and everything. And, uh, I'm right now I'm designing that world, uh, the realm of where the dragons reside. And this has been cool because this is my first major large format fantasy piece. And I'm really enjoying it. Um, I had a lot of fun doing the sky. And I, if you if you listen to my podcast on Artist Simply, or my podcast interview on Artist Simply, uh, I talk about how there's no rules. And this painting is really challenging because there are no rules. I can do whatever I want. So how do you do whatever you want when you're a painter who traditionally uses reference photos for landscape art? Well... You still use those reference photos, but you transform them into fantasy work. So the basic, the basis of this realm, uh, the sky was just a, whatever I felt like putting up there. Uh, but the rocky crags and everything, these are uh, inspired by the Red Hills of Sedona, Arizona. It's kind of where I'm gathering the idea from it. And so I'm using that as a basis. Um, water reference, that's easy. But yeah, so the Red Hills of Sedona, Arizona... Um, along with you know the the wildlife vegetation or the vegetation rather not really wildlife uh, the vegetation for that area i think will be perfect for this realm where the dragons live and so there's going to be a dragon there there's going to be a dragon on top of that rock there's going to be baby dragons all around the waterfall it's going to be pretty cool and it's also my first delve into painting dragons so that'll be interesting we'll see how that turns out but anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm helpful to give any tips that I use or tricks. Um, I'm by no means a professional, but uh, I am always willing to share what I know and what I've learned or where I learned them from. So uh, yeah, that's about it. I hope everyone's having a great day and I'll see you next time. And one last little tidbit. This is my studio assistant, Mala. Uh, she is our little mini schnauzer and she makes sure to take enough naps for all of us. And she makes sure that the couch is nice and comfy. Say hi, Mala. Hi, boobies. Hi.